In this video we're going to be looking at the biological drug therapies that are used to treat schizophrenia. They're known as typical and atypical antipsychotics, and both work by different mechanisms, have different effects and importantly side effects. As well as discussing all of that, we're going to evaluate the use of drug therapy in the treatment of schizophrenia. Let's begin. Psychboost.com, over 170 videos to help you with your qualification, and Patreon supporters can access bonus resources, tutorial videos, and the Discord channel. So both of the drug treatments in this video are classified as antipsychotics or neuroleptics, and they work by interfering with neurotransmitter systems. They can be taken in pill form or injection. Typical antipsychotics are known as first generation. They were the first drug treatment to be developed back in the 1950s. They're less popular now due to the development of atypical antipsychotics, which as we'll see have less severe side effects. Typical antipsychotics work by interfering with the dopamine system. They're what's known as a dopamine antagonist, meaning they take the place of dopamine in the receptors on the postsynaptic neuron, reducing the effectiveness of dopamine, resulting in a calming effect. An example of a typical antipsychotic is clopromazine. These drugs only seem to be effective in reducing the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, so hallucinations and delusions. As these drugs affect the dopamine pathways across the brain, there are a range of unintended side effects. Some examples are dry mouth, constipation, low energy, and in some cases, after extended use, an unpleasant symptom called tardive dyskinesia. Now this is an uncontrollable repetitive movement that tend to affect the face such as lip movement. In the 1970s, a second generation of antipsychotics were developed, known as atypical. And it was found that these drugs could reduce the positive, but also the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Additionally, these drugs have more manageable side effects. An example of an atypical antipsychotic is clozapine. These drugs also affect the dopamine system, but they also influence other neurotransmitter systems, including serotonin and glutamate. However, these drugs do have side effects such as weight gain and cardiovascular problems. However, significant advantage is atypical drugs are very unlikely to cause tardive dyskinesia. So that is the two classes of drug treatment, an example of a drug in each family, the neurochemical systems they interact with, and the side effects. Let's consider some evaluations. Firstly, Le Chet, who conducted a meta-analysis on 212 studies that compared the effectiveness of antipsychotics that work by normalizing dopamine to placebos. The findings showed that the drugs were much more effective at the treatment of schizophrenia than placebo. And this suggests that antipsychotic drugs are effective and should be used as part of a treatment plan for schizophrenia. A second meta-analysis of 212 studies by Bagnall compared the effectiveness of different types of antipsychotics, typical and atypical. And it was found that atypical drugs were more effective than typical antipsychotics in reducing symptoms, and they produced fewer movement disorder side effects. And very importantly, fewer people discontinued treatment on the atypical antipsychotics. Out of all the antipsychotics tested, clozapine was found to be the most effective, especially in treating negative symptoms and treating people who are resistant to other antipsychotics. These results suggest that the development of the atypical drugs has improved the lives of many people who have suffered from the symptoms of schizophrenia, but also the severe side effects of typical antipsychotics. But as atypical drugs influence a range of neurotransmitters, it may cast some doubt on the dopamine hypothesis of schizophrenia. However, a third research study by Tarrier shows there are improvements that can be made with standard drug therapy. This research placed patients randomly into routine care, so antipsychotics, or antipsychotics in addition to CBT. It was found that in the combined treatment plan, patients had fewer and less severe positive symptoms, as well as spending fewer days in hospital receiving care. Now, this suggests that actually an interactionist approach to treating schizophrenia is a better option than drug therapy alone. Now, a useful evaluation to consider is the effect that the development of antipsychotics has had on the economy. Reducing the symptoms of schizophrenia in patients has allowed them to return to the workplace and directly contribute to the economy. Drugs are also a much cheaper treatment than working with a trained therapist, saving health services money. And the drugs have allowed people to be treated in the community, saving the expense of treating people full-time in institutions. However, we could criticise drug therapies as potentially just suppressing some of the symptoms, not really treating the true cause of schizophrenia, as symptoms return quickly when the drugs have stopped. Also, many studies look at the short-term effects of drugs, 
not so much the long-term effects. Drug treatment has resulted in the end of large-scale institutionalisation, basically locking sufferers into specialised hospitals. Now people are far more likely to be treated in the community, living independently or with their families. And an ethical problem with drug treatment is drugs are occasionally given by force to people with severe symptoms. And it can be questioned if we should be forcibly injecting people against their will, especially with the serious side effects that these drugs have. And on that point of side effects, we see a revolving door with two thirds of people taking antipsychotics quitting their treatment plan, often to avoid those side effects, leading to the return of symptoms and then needing to start the drug therapy again. We may suggest that drug treatment therapy is ultimately not effective with such a high dropout rate. So after covering all of that information, here's a real exam question that you might want to attempt. And if you're a patron at the neuron level and above, you can access a tutorial on PsychBoost in which I will talk you through a model answer for this question and some general tips. For everyone else, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the videos released right up until the exams. And I'll see you in the next PsychBoost video.